Hello my fellow geeks, I'm Mark and today on Elite Geek I'm going to replace the FEP in my Solval 3D resin vat that I use with my Anycubic Mono. Now I'm going to call it a FEP and not an FEP and I'm going to pronounce it as Solval because I don't know any better. You may have seen my video, I'll link it up here if you haven't, on this vat. I really love it. I have four of them at this point and I actually ordered two more so I can compare the uh, PTFE vats so we'll see how those look soon. But I've got uh, several vats here and I'm going to replace this one. I'm going to show you why I'm replacing it. There, I had to find it. See if you can see that there, right there. That is why I'm replacing this. I can feel this on the bottom. If I could only feel this on the top, I wouldn't worry about it. Now, this is still watertight. It's not quite all the way through, but man, it's so close. I don't want to take any chances. This one I hadn't had on very long, and I ended up setting it down, and it, it fell over on me so don't do that use the shields that these come with they're so nice so I'm mostly following the advice of another video that I saw that I will link down below where he changes in any cubic vat these are very 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 similar to that except there are a couple things that I am gonna do just a little bit different and I'm gonna show you specifically for these vats with the FEP that I'm using how I tighten it down and exactly where I get it because I've done enough of these now that they're all exactly the same and I can just do it by feel. So I'm gonna show you what that ends up looking like. First, I have a second one here. This one's still good, but I took this one out because I was curious. In the video, we've been shown to use the spectrum app and check the spectrum. So I was curious, what is the spectrum of one of these right from the factory? So this one is right at 250 to 314. I wanted to see what they were like by default, so then I knew where to go to. And I've heard it doesn't matter all that much, but it's really easy to get in that range. So that's right where I'm gonna do. So this is my good working one. I'm going to put this away in a nice tray and set that to the side. This is the FEP that I'll be using. This is in a completely nondescript package, but I will link the one that I use down below. I've used enough of this now that I'm very, very happy with it. I actually just ordered more before I placed this video to make sure I got mine before they run out. Now this can I have sheets that I've printed 30 prints on now and don't have any issues. This one, like I mentioned, fell over and that's where I have an issue. I haven't had any of these fail yet. Well, I haven't had any of them fail at all yet, but I haven't had any problems with them unless I cause damage to them in some manner. So for this, I'm going to recommend you get a set of metric screwdrivers, metric Allen screwdrivers. It's just a much better way to feel how it's working, and you'll use these tools a lot as you have your 3D printer working, whether it's a resin or an any other printer. It's just very handy to have these around and these will come in the right size. So I'm going to use the two and a half millimeter for the outside here. We'll set these to the side. And these, when you're removing this, it, it doesn't matter what order you remove them in. Just take these all out and set them to the side in a manner so they won't damage anything and you won't lose them. So we'll just skip through uh, taking these out. You'll notice I am wearing gloves. Definitely, definitely want to wear gloves. Don't touch any of this on a vat that has been printed with, without gloves. Okay, there's the outside frame. I really love how sturdy these frames are. I absolutely love these frames. Now we have the inside, and these are a two millimeter, two millimeter, wrench. So if you do get a set of these, uh, I will link, probably not the set that I have because I've had these for years, but I'll link a set that will work for you down below. So I'll just take all these out. Order doesn't matter. Not at all. All right, so there we go. Now we'll take this out, take away the old FEP. You see there is still just a little bit of liquid on there. So I have a, a pile of old FEPs that I've got wrapped in plastic over here. Just set it there. Got a paper towel here. I'm gonna give it all a good wipe down just to make sure I have all of it off that I can get. If you have any that's uh, solidified on there or that you have any residue, you could use a little IPA to get that off. I don't think you need any special cleaner. I haven't had any situations that were bad enough that I needed to spray it down with Windex or special cleaners at all. Okay, now we have the two parts of the frame. Now we need the new FEP or FEP. Important, important thing that I've seen several people mess up on. Don't just put this in there and be ready to go. This FEP that I have, tighten my gloves here, 
It has two layers of protection on it to protect it. Very similar to what you find on a screen protector. There we go. So there, I've got plastic on this side, plastic on this side, and the actual FEP in the middle. Okay, I'm actually gonna set that aside for just a second to talk about what to set underneath it and why you need to set something underneath it. So the first time I did this, I used a milk carton lid. This is an American one gallon chocolate milk lid. I used this and it wasn't big enough. I was kind of surprised, but I could actually tell a difference. So now I do have a Gatorade. It's the traditional Gatorade that everybody talks about lid that I'm gonna set here. Future Mark jumping in after the fact, just to uh, clarify one question I just saw come up on Facebook. Like, okay, I talk about a Gatorade cap, but how big is a Gatorade cap? Because maybe not everybody just has Gatorade. There are people all around the world watching this video. So I'm gonna show you, I've got my calipers here to see how big the cap I use is. So it's basically 39, 40, 39 and a half millimeters, 40 millimeters uh, in diameter and 12.7 millimeters tall, so 12, 13 millimeters tall. If you don't have Gatorade caps and you need to get something, there are actually files for this on Thingiverse. I will link those down below as well. So if you wanna print a spacer, you can do that and have one. So if you don't just have a Gatorade cap handy. So don't worry about that if you don't have Gatorade in your country or whatever. Okay, back to the video. The reason you do this is because when you put your FEP in place, you actually need it to be loose at this point because when you tighten it in the frame over here, it has to be loose so you can tighten it down. Here's a, here's a good one now. Now this is from the factory. You can see how far down this frame is screwed and this FEP has to be able to stretch all the way over there. And if you install it tight in the frame here, it's not going to stretch over here. It's just going to break. So you have to have it loose in the frame in order to do that. And an easy way to do that is with a Gatorade lid. Any cubic, I believe, uses a like two liter bottle lid, which is taller, but not as big around. That'll probably work too. But like I had a Gatorade, so that's what I'm using. So now I set it around here as even as I can get it without like over measuring. It's, it needs to be even, but it's not like, it'll make a humongous difference if it's not and set the frame on top. Now, when I do this, I try and press it down slowly to make sure the cap will allow the plastic and hold the plastic up so it stretches around. Now, I do want the cap to be as close as I can get into the middle, so I can see it's not quite in the middle. I'm gonna move that just a little bit. There we go, a little piece of fuzz on the top there. Okay, that's pretty good. And then as I push this down, it's gonna pull this plastic out and it's gonna make it a little bit loose. Now, one other thing that I see people do is go with the corners and go around like you would the wheel on a car. And it's important for that, or if you're doing a drum, you need to go around symmetrical. But this is a little bit different because this is not round like your wheel on your car or like a drum is. It's, it's a rectangle. This, in my theory, and this is, this is just my theory and what's worked for me, this is more like putting a canvas on a picture frame. In that case, you'd start from the middle and you work your way out. Because if you tighten these edges here, you could end up with wrinkles in the middle. And if you go from the middle, it pushes things out and will stretch it appropriately. So that's what I do. I start with these four here in the middle, these four here in the middle, and work my way out. And it's worked for me, and if something different works for you, that's fine, but this is what works for me. So in order to put these in, I use an X-Acto knife because you want to punch through. You don't want to just screw through here. You'll end up stretching the FEP. You do need to cut it. You don't need a special punch, just an X-Acto knife. If you don't have X-Acto knives, just buy a set. I bought a set with like 40 blades on Amazon. It was super cheap. I'll, I'll link the one I got below. So I get this all lined up here. I just punch that one through. And with these, I do these, punch these through one at a time. Now for my theory here, I do wish there was one in the middle middle, but there's not. So now, get this lined up, punch this one in, and put it in. Now I'll go back up here. And when I'm tightening these down, I'll go back here now, I don't tighten them down quite all the way. I put them through, and I get it finger tight, but I don't tighten it like 
fully, fully tight yet because I want the frame to have just a little bit of flexibility to make sure everything lines up perfectly. So now I'll go back up here and I'm just gonna go around like this, working my way out to get them all in place and to pull the plastic out evenly. Actually, see, I, I did that in the wrong order. I wanted to do this one next and not the corner. I want to save the corners for last. So I even messed it up, but it's it, it's going to wor still work. These are minor differences, honestly, in the end. But when it's free and easy to make it work, make it better if possible, I might as well. I'm gonna go through around these again and just make sure they are all tight. Because I mentioned earlier, you don't want them quite all tight. Now I'm gonna make sure they are all snug and even. Okay, so there. Now we have this set and you can see here, you can almost see the curve of it. See how symmetrical that is? For the most part, it's very clean and even, and it will stretch. Now, when I pop this back and forth, it pops very easily, and it will stretch very evenly. So I'm quite happy with that. Now, I will grab my vat here again. Flip this over. Now, as I put this in, it's gonna be nice and even. So again, I'm gonna go from the center out, because I want the pressure to be even distributed out as I go and the middle is the easiest part for it to mess up. So now I'll go back to my, there it is, two and a half millimeter. Now these first ones I'm just going to barely put in. They're, they're just enough to get the thread started is all I want with this first round. I want the, all the screws to be in, started just a little bit so enough that it won't pull out, but I don't want to torque it down hardly at all. Now, they're all started. I have them started on all sides. Now, I will slowly apply pressure, and what I kind of do to get a sense of where they are is I compare the metal frame here with the black frame on the inside. So with this first round, I'm gonna go in just enough that it's a little over the black frame still. I don't wanna go down all the way until it's level yet. So I'm gonna to torque each one of these down until they're just there and I can see it start to pull on the plastic a little bit. But I can tell by looking at the frame where things are. So now see, these edges so the center is in but it makes the center pro proper and now when I pull down this outside edge it's going to take up the slack exactly the way I want it to. So now I can feel right where it is. It's ju there's just a little bit of an edge on the side on the metal here. Okay, so it's just a little high. Now I'm gonna tell you, this is not where I'm gonna leave it at all, but I wanna show you what happens as we go. So I'm gonna set this on its side. Okay, so we're gonna look at the spectrum on this. So see how low that is, 100, right, just under 200. So as I tighten this, just like a drum, it's gonna get higher pitched as I go. So this is not where I would want it at all, but that's exactly the results that I want when I'm not screwed in enough. So the next I'll go around and do the same thing and I'll pull it so I can feel it. I'll feel it with my thumb here until it's even. So I'll do this in several rounds. So there right now I can feel it. For that one it's even. This one's still too high over here but this one's now flush with the black and that's how I try and have it stretch this plastic, this plastic sheet of FEP across appropriately without damaging anything. There, now all of them are perfectly flush. 
and we're in the realm of where it could be visible. Now I'll tell you when I'm normally doing this, I would not stop and check it at this point. I'm just doing this because of the video, but I'm gonna show you what it does. So there, 314. So that's within the realm of reason on what everybody says the frequency could be. So I could stop here, but I'm not going to because if you look at the original, look how low that is by comparison versus what I've got here. Here I've got it flush. I don't want to take any chance of this damaging this. And I've done enough of these now, so I know exactly what's going to happen. So now what I'll do is I'll go around the whole thing one more time and I will go basically the same as I did the first time, except now the metal is recessed below the black. I, I can't even, I can't even measure it enough. Okay. See that? That tip there, that's how far below the frame I am right now. Now I'll do that same thing, get it to that same amount, which is about an extra. Normally I've just done it by feel, I've never thought about it that way. Now I'll say it's just a little bit over, a little bit more than that. Now I'm happy with that. So now let's test this again, see what happens. still in a good range depending on how much that matters to you but it's also now recessed below here if you want to be able to screw it down all the way you need to have more slack in the FEP before you do that so now just so we can see for scientific purposes here I'm gonna screw this frame down all the way and let's see what happens now I will still do it over a couple turns here I'm not gonna just screw one screw down all the way because it's got a long way to go Okay, now that's down all the way. It is very, very tight. Let's see what happens. Oh. So it's a little bit higher. Is it in the problem range? Mm, I don't know. So I did a little more research, and the answer seems to be anywhere between 250 hertz and 500 hertz is fine or it doesn't make any difference at all. That everybody who says all of that is just making it up. So this is right around 400, we're well in that range. I have not tried this before with this tightened down all the way, so the advantage here is I can go try it, find out how it goes, and then come back and let you know. So I'll be back sometime soon. Oh wait, before I do that, actually you, now I need to cut off the extra here. And I just use the same exact Zacto knife for that. I just go along the edge here and I'm etching this metal and I really don't care. So there I just cut along. Make sure you have a nice new clean blade when you do this. And it should go very easy and you shouldn't honestly have any problem with damaging your center FEP. But this will give you just the right amount along the edges and cut it nice and clean for you. Easy peasy. Okay, so I tested it and it, you know, it worked fine. I couldn't tell any detriment, but I like this better because this is how I've done most of them. So this is what I would recommend you do. As we had earlier, you have it flat with the edge here. And then I did one full rotation past that. So I would take it, I put it in, I turned it one full 360 degrees. That gets it just below this edge. There we go. And that's how all of them that I've done have been. And I've been very, very happy with them. I've had no problems with them at all. So that's been great. And it makes it very easy. And honestly, I do that and with using this amount of gap. And I put that in. I don't even use the spectrum analyzer anymore. I just set them up that way. They're all pretty much exactly the same. They work great. And I'm thrilled with them. So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. If you don't have any of these vats, I highly, highly, highly recommend them. They are outstanding, way better than the uh, one that came with the Inacubic Mono, at least. And until next time, remember, if you're going to be a geek, be an elite geek.